The documentary Blackfish grossed $2 million at the box office and has been seen by more than 21 million TV viewers after its broadcast on CNN. The movie challenges how SeaWorld treats its orcas, or killer whales, often called by the name Shamu. SeaWorld declined to join us for this interview, but the director of the Blackfish film, Gabriella Calperthwaite, is here to talk about what's happened since the film's release. Welcome to Evening Edition. Thank you for having me. Now, Gabriella, the premise of Blackfish, as I understand it, is that killer whales at SeaWorld are only, not only potentially dangerous to their trainers, but also their confinement could be humane, could be inhumane, I should say. Mm -hmm. um, how did you come to the conclusion that the confinement might be part of the problem? Um, I think it's actually a combination of really understanding what it is that they need in the wild, and also understanding what it is that happens, actually really happens at SeaWorld. Um, and so in terms of what they need in the wild, we learn that over the course of the years, you know, I'm a mother who took her kids to SeaWorld. So, you know, I made this documentary without really knowing anything about whales or really their, the science behind them. They um, swim up to 100 miles a day. Out in the wild. Correct, in the wild. In captivity, they just do laps around a pool. Um, you know, they f fight with one another in the pools and confinement because, you know, although they do that, right, they vie for dominance in the wild, once that subdominant animal loses that tussle, they're peaceful. They, that animal's now an outlier and they kind of continue on quite peaceably. In captivity, nobody ever gets to flee. So I they see. constantly fight. Now, we know your documentary follows the career of an Orlando SeaWorld orca named uh, Tilikum, and who is responsible or blamed for the death of uh, SeaWorld trainer Don um, Brancho. Now, her family has distanced themselves uh, from the film, saying that Don would have never worked for SeaWorld for 15 years if she thought the whales were treated badly. Are you surprised by the family's response? No, I think it's um, incredibly, an incredibly difficult film for them. Um, you know, the film has to uh, essentially bring up her death. That is not the way the, the family wants to remember her. Um, you know, they want to remember her for her life. Um, so it is a very difficult and emotional piece. And so I understand where they're coming from. You know, whether or not she would work there, um, if she knew that bad things were happening with the whales, you know, that, that could be true. I'm, I'm not, I can never speak for Dawn. What I do know is that many trainers, even trainers who are working there now, who are communicating with me, um, oftentimes don't leave precisely because they don't want to leave their whales. Once they're there for a long enough time, they might be disillusioned by what happens there, but they actually don't leave because they're not sure if once they leave, anybody will take care of their whale as the well as they, they did. They're very attached. Correct. Uh, as I mentioned, SeaWorld didn't uh, want to talk to us for this interview, but SeaWorld officials did release a, a letter in which uh, online that we have, which called your film uh, Propaganda. And they've also launched a video um, page with trainers in your film that say they were misrepresented. Mm -hmm. Mark Simmons was one of those trainers. Let's look. What really upset me was this idea that SeaWorld's deceived its trainers and the public um, because that couldn't be further from the truth. That is a, a completely foreign to me. Nobody cares about those animals more than the people that are boots on the ground there with them. Uh, there, there's no doubt in my mind about that. So he's saying what you said. These, nobody cares more about these animals than, than the trainers themselves. But he is critical, saying he was misrepresented in the film. How do you respond? Um, well, for, for one, we agree completely on that fact. I think that, that nobody cares more for the whales inside SeaWorld, SeaWorld's walls than the trainers do. I stand by that. Everybody stands by that. Um, however, in terms of misrepresentation, Mark Simmons is pro SeaWorld, and he is still affiliated with that place um, and, you know, captures uh, uh, assets. He, they call them assets, millions of dollars worth of assets, um, but they're animals for SeaWorld. And, and in addition to that, you know, I do think he is pro SeaWorld, but he was depicted as being pro SeaWorld in the film. Okay. Um, what do you think should happen to the animals at SeaWorld parks? Um, I actually never, and oftentimes I think people think that we wanted to shut SeaWorld down. We don't. We actually think they should spearhead um, the, you know, the evolution, essentially evolve us out of animals for entertainment, um, and particularly killer whales for entertainment, into sea sanctuaries. Um, where you can actually cordon off part of an ocean cove and retire some of these whales there. You can still charge ticket fees, but the whales would have a sustainable sort of dignified existence. Stopping the captive breeding program would be necessary as well. Um, this should be the last generation 
of whales in captivity. And that phases out over a long time. It's not tomorrow, but I think we're all evolving. I think that SeaWorld should be front and center spearheading the movement. And why did you make this documentary? I had a question. I don't come from animal activism. I didn't even think about the whale welfare issue. I wondered why a top level SeaWorld trainer came to be killed by a killer whale when killer whales don't kill us in the wild. I just had that burning question and sort of peeled back the onion and was, was shocked by what I discovered. Okay, well there's a whole lot more on the blackfish controversy on our website, kpbs.org. Filmmaker Gabriella Calperthwaite, thank you so much for talking with us. Thank you.